Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and who are you going to call? So Ghostbusters Frozen Empire came out in 2024, finally got a chance to watch it. Supernatural comedy film. Uh, and I, I do want to say there's like, you, you know, you have these buddy cop kind of things is with an ensemble cast kind of like setup. That's basically where it shines. However, I do think it's getting a little bit overcrowded. There are way too many people in this movie as the as the Ghostbusters, to be honest. When it was just the four of them, that was amazing. Uh, now you've got this family and you've got the veterans, uh, minus Ewan Spegler. But yeah, it, I, look, I'm not complaining too much about it. It's just that it, it does stand out quite a bit. There's way too many people in it. Uh, however, that's possibly also something which could have been done maybe like a little better. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not really sure. Having different kind of roles in it. Uh, anyway, let's see what the movie is about. It is a sequel to 2021's Ghostbusters Afterlife. With, which I think is better than this movie. And this is the fifth film in the Ghostbusters franchise. Oh yeah, it is a, that's 2016's that movie. That movie which we shall not mention. However, I'll do a review of that sometime soon. The movie stars Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon, Finn Wolfhard, McKenna Grace. And I am getting a little annoyed with this character, to be honest. But not the actress. Celeste O'Connor and Logan King also come back from the first movie alongside the veterans Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, uh, you've got Ernie Hudson, Annie Potts and William Atherton, all of them reprising their roles from the previous films. New to, this, to the franchise is I do not know why they brought this guy in. He's an absolute waste of a character in this and I'm not even sure if I really like him too much. But Kumal Nanjiani, absolute waste. The character is you. Damn it, if there's a negative part in this movie, it is him. I can't stand him in this role. I, overall, I don't think he's that bad, but in this role, it's really bad. Patton Oswald, Emily Allen Lind, and James Ma James Acaster also joins the cast. So this is set three years after the events of Afterlife. The Ghostbusters have to destroy this. They all join forces and destroy this uh, Deathchilling God, who's also a ghost. <laughs> yeah, so that's basically that. Uh, there's there's a lot of addition to it. Like it, it kind of like looks like just like how you have a franchise, you getting this setup where it's going to be like a uh, like a big team where you have some scientists in a lab, you've got people doing research you've got people doing something else and then you've got the actual ghostbusters and they will move in here and there that part is exciting but at the same time like when they are actually doing it there's way too many people so uh so like i've already mentioned made of the main character excuse me paul red is paul red you would enjoy it no matter what carrie coon is pretty good enough in this movie so is Wind Wolfhard, but like I said, I can't stand the character of Phoebe Spengler. Uh, it is always lovely to see Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and even Annie Potts in their roles. Uh, Logan Kim as podcast is one that character that I can actually, a new character as a kid who is really funny. Uh, I'm actually very happy that he's in this movie as well. But then again, Look at the number of people in this movie, or the main cast of this movie. And it is an ensemble cast, yes, you can't deny that, but at the same time, uh, yeah, way too many people, so. Uh, but do I enjoy it? Yes, I do. Um, you know, and I think that's the direction that's actually going where you will have more, the three of them plus Annie Pot, I'm sorry. Annie Potts character's name is uh, Jenny Belden's. I'm sorry, I think I'm supposed to say yeah. So we will have the the veterans and Annie Potts 
being in a consultation role or maybe uh, have them uh, head the uh, office and take care of things over there more or less and then you'll have Paul Rudd and the rest go and do the battle. I guess they're going to put uh, Tadeem Rasmadi uh, Kumal Nanji as a new character as a Ghostbuster in this one because apparently he's got some kind of superpowers. So that's probably where they're going down the line and if that is so, I'm actually on board because when they're actually going and doing the actual Ghostbusting, can't be that there is ways to, I mean, at least it's for me, that's how I feel, can't be that there is way too many people in it, that's, it's going to be, it's going to look really funny because you need to have, people have certain lines and it looks very forced when you're having one particular person come in and say a particular line and then somebody else can say something else, you know, it looks very scripted and doesn't seem to be anything that's actually uh, you know uh, genuine it just sounds more forged now the movie is pretty new it came out in march uh, of this year and it has made 190 almost 200 bucks at the box office uh, it is being released to the uh, uh, streaming services so there's that like I said, uh, theatrical release, I don't know why it do much better. Uh, home media is, like it's out on streaming right now from May 7th and you can get it on DVD, Blu-ray, 4K on uh, 25th of June. Uh, critical response, it's mostly positive I guess, but it, like you know, nostalgia factor is very high with this particular movie. But yes, here it is, crowded cast is what's and there's also a surprising serious story uh, there's also this thing about Paul Rudd being accepted as a stepdad dad for the man typically uh, how it happens uh, the daughter character played by uh, Phoebe basically towards the end calls him dad and he's it's very very typical of this stuff but like I said no I can never say anything negative of Paul Rudd he's Paul Rudd Uh, what else do they say? It is the lowest rated installment in the franchise <laughs> on site. Even 2016 one has been higher than this. Great. I can't believe it. I, it's way better than that to be honest. But like I said, it, it, it doesn't give me that the, the, the fun of the first two films. It's, it's severely lacking to be honest. Uh, the first two movies are of course magic. The first one especially. Uh, and yeah, so you... What is the thing? What is I am actually happy that the critics actually got the same feeling as I did. Uh, so it's a, it's got enough of the nostalgia factor for me to want to watch it over and over again. Although, to be honest, I haven't watched the 2021 movie since I went. But I want to watch uh, the other uh, Ghostbuster films as well, give it a review. So there's also this. A little bit of a romance thing happening with <coughs> with the ghost and uh, Phoebe's character. So I'm guessing Phoebe's going to be uh, a lesbian, a gay character. So there's that. People do. I don't have a problem with that as long as it's done well. Uh, Firemaster. That's what Nadine and his grandmother were. Uh, they pre uh, she prevented the original. I mean the original fight with the the that on board the Garaka from escaping the orb back in 1904. So yeah, there's that. Um, so that's about the film. Like I said, I don't want to go into the full story length, but overall, it's still enjoyable. I will give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. Yeah. 7.5 out of 10. Not bad still. Thank you guys. Have a good night.